Welcome to episode 14 of Northwind, the Druid True First Life series. Level 15, I'm actually already pegged to 16, and I still have a lot of quests to go that I really want to do before I take 16. And some of those quests are to finish up the Giant Hold walk-ups. Very important, that's Argonescent Favor, and you can get some great rewards from Argonescent Favor. For Tier 1, you can get like a portable hull, you can get uh, like one of the dragon shards that are required to feed swap. And then the tier 2 reward is the draconic vitality in which you get uh, just a plus 10 stacking hit points uh, that stays with you. Really, really awesome. So that's a necessary favor reward that you want to work toward in my opinion. Uh, so in this episode I'm going to be doing Elite Memoirs of an Illusory Larsener. This is a tough quest uh, compared to others at this level. Now, if you're a little bit newer to the game, you may not be aware that the newer quests are a lot harder hitting than older quests of the same level. So, for example, Memoirs here, which is 13 base, so 15 on Elite, compared to like Giant Hold walkups, like Trial by Fire or something like that, which is the same level, uh, I mean, it, there's just no comparison. I'm walking through those Giant Hold walkups, whereas this one. This one's challenging not only because the mobs are hitting harder, but there are no shrines in here, so I really have to to run conservatively with the mana. Now, I'm 15 now, and I've already run this quest probably maybe three, four times on Elite, and then once on Normal and Hard. I'm trying to get the Pansophic Circlet. That's why I chose this quest, because it's a very important piece of gear, really, for any caster. That is probably the best... It, it is the gen, best general potency item in the game. Uh, that's a level 13 item. And I'll be wearing that I, if I get it right up until I get the hopefully get the legendary version at level 28. Which and then the legendary version at 28 is the king of general potency items right now. In addition to being a great general potency item, it has 5% and then 10% on the legendary magical efficiency, which reduces the cost of your uh, of your spells, which is huge for me because I'm so spell point starved as the as the true first lifer. All right, let's take a look at where things are. Armor class 52, that goes a little bit higher when I'm buffed up, so, you know, I think it's respectable for where I'm at, for what, for the things I want to do um, on this true first life for 65 PRR, I'm pretty happy about that. At level 15, I picked up the improved shield mastery feat. So my feats are exactly the way they're set up on my build post right now. And the only minor variation that I did was when I swapped out augment summoning a few levels early because you know I, I, like I said the wolf just wasn't holding up he was becoming a liability so I just didn't want to spend any more resources on the wolf now if I was more serious about the wolf one of the things that I would have at this point is uh, the vampiric stone dust hand wraps collar it's a level 12 collar that you gotta make out of ingredients you get from the large march 1 and 2 chain and that's a fantastic probably the best general purpose collar at this level range. You can stone mobs. Um, I think it's got bonuses. To, I forget, but it's a, it's a great, great collar for, you know, sort of mid to upper teen, well, early teen levels. And then the best collar, I think, probably once you get to 18, you're looking at the, the rack wraps, and then you convert that into a collar. You can convert any hand wraps easily to a collar just by going to a device workstation. There are device workstations in house C down there by the lava caves challenge there's one in evening star and then there may be one in your guild ship too it's a, something you can have in your cargo cargo bay but i'm not trying to i'm i'm not really using the wolf for much more than like running distraction or pulling level levers at this point again because he's just not holding up well especially in a harder hitting quest like this one so just showing you the collar i have here that's the same as before and the armor. It's Constitution 7 on there. So that's pretty cool. On the enhancements for the wolf, I'm up to Cunning Wolf 4 and Wolf Instincts 4, Striding 3, Opportunistic Bite. So for Opportunistic Bite, Wolfpack Flanking 2. Earlier in the series I talked about how I was picking up wolf, Wolfpack Flanking and I couldn't remember what it was a prerequisite for. Is for Opportunistic Bite. I'm um, up to Bite 4 and Lupine Onslaught Striding 2 is a requirement 
prerequisite for Lupine Onslaught. Okay, not going to be using the wolf in this video, so I just, I'm just going to dismiss him. Just wanted to show you where things were there. 55, level 55, almost 56 on the crafting. Again, just from deconstructing. been deconstructing all my junk, posting my essences on the auction, auction house. But I haven't been doing that lately. I'll tell you why in a minute. So uh, that's 397 trash pieces of loot that I have dis uh, deconstructed into essences. That's, I've done no crafting other than just crunching my stuff. On the spells side, got level 8 spells now. The king of crowd control, the amazing, the one and only Earthquake. Wow. Earthquake is so awesome. Uh, it is a reflex save, and most mobs don't have good reflex saves. So this is, you know, I talked about how druids aren't traditional DC casters. You don't need giant DCs to be a very effective caster druid. The reflex save, very different than like a fort save or a will save, where you need, you know, big, big numbers to hit there. With the reflex save, again, most mobs don't have high reflex saves, and you can have more modest DCs. Again, you don't want to just toss your DCs out the window. They are important, but they're not just they're not as essential as like a, a traditional DC caster that's throwing like phantasmal killers and fingers of death and and stuff like that and one of the cool things is that earthquake is not a pass fail it, it actually takes every couple of seconds and gives it a, 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 like a, a knockdown a different a separate knockdown chance every time it ticks so they don't fall on the first time you know they could fall on the second time the, the successive times and you could stack your earthquakes too if your earthquakes aren't hitting as well as you would like you can throw two of them down, and each one of them will tick a separate uh, knockdown effect. It also does a little bit of damage, but here's an important point with Earthquake. I turn off my metamagic damaging feats for Earthquake because the damage that it does is not significant. I just had uh, the second person find me here. This is... It's only the second person that's tracked me down over here on Kaneth, so it's really cool to hear from people over here that uh, are, he said he, he had tried my build and enjoyed it, which was really awesome, and uh, just, I love to hear it, it's it's so cool. And now he's on video. <laughs> uh, Alright, so I was saying about Earthquake, uh, it's, the damage that it does just isn't worth pouring those extra spell points in. Uh, it's it's a lot of extra spell points to maximize and empower it, and again, it, it's just the damage isn't worth it. So tr to save a little bit of mana, turn off maximize and power for earthquake is really the knockdown effect that you are uh, really interested in in that spell, not the damage that causes from it. Although there is kind of a quirky thing where like, you know, if you ever ever had a mob stuck in a wall, or for some reason you had to, you know, get a mob that was like behind a gate or something like that. Earthquake being thrown on the ground will affect mobs like in a wall or behind a gate. So it's just a, I actually used that uh, when I was doing Maze of Madness to get uh, oh right there at the shrine to kill whatever that caster is in that room. I thought I'd throw some earthquakes down on the, right in the, there in front of the gate and kill him before I shrined. Uh, all right, so what else do we got? So heal, finally got heal. Um, I mean, heal is the is the king healing spell, and between that and regenerate, I mean, you get the two best healing spells in the game, really. Uh, just, just so awesome. It's also worth mentioning that you do not need level seven spell components. There are literally no spells that a druid has that are level seven that require spell components, except for true seeing. That's the only, it's literally the only one on the list. And you should not be memorizing and casting true seeing from your spell book get some scrolls okay it saves it, it saves spell points you don't need true seeing that often when you do you just cast it from scrolls having some scrolls like that uh, and just casting things like that from scroll is another way to save spell points all right on the skill side, I do want to mention that it has come, become very clear that I am not going to be able to put any points in use magic device. I did put one point in on, on creation. I'm, you know, without, you know, you know intelligence tomes and uh, it's just it's not gonna or that's charisma actually. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So you know, unfortunately, on this true first lifer, I'm not going to be able to get to like, you know, cast teleport scrolls or raise dead scrolls or anything. That's fine. You know, 
that's something I would work, definitely work toward, uh, but it's just not going to happen on this true first lifer. On the enhancement side, where am I? I picked up a point of wisdom. It put me at an odd number, but at level 16, I'm going to get another point of wisdom, so I was just, you know, I knew that I would benefit from that very soon. Uh, I'm not sure if I had efficient meta magic, magic maximize uh, completely maxed out last video. I did early on, but then I dumped it because I wanted to get the, the greater heroism, and then I started picking it up again. And I also picked up Strength of Solstice as plus one of the DCs of my evocation and transmutation spells. I don't think there are any transmutation spells that are DC based from a druid. <laughs> nothing, nothing comes to mind, but in any event, evocation is huge. So, picked up Earthquake, so I thought I'd pick up that too. Let's take a look at the gear, and I want to show you something pretty cool. Check this out. I've already got my 100 Shadow Dragon Scales ready to go for my Shadow Dragon Scale armor, which I'll get the base at 26, upgrade at 28. So I did a video a while ago saying like Shadow Dragon or like uh, you know Thunder Thunder Forge stuff, like Tier 2 weapons and fully upgraded armor. You don't even need to run any raids, and uh, yeah, you can get this stuff without ever. Having, and and so here I am, level 15. I already got 100 Shadow Dragon Scales. How did I do it? I'll tell you how. Uh, that double. <laughs> That double slotted blank that I found for cheap on the auction house. You know, I f over the last couple days I kept posting in general trade like I will trade this for 100 Shadow Dragon scales, and that's actually a smoking deal. I mean, that is an irreplaceable item, and those that haven't dropped for a couple of years. So I knew just it just would take the right person to come along, because see, here's the thing: veteran players that are raiders, they got stacks of this stuff. Shadow Dragon scales, they got stacks of it. Dwarven ingots, you get stacks of this stuff. So if you can come up with something those people want, you know, dropping 100 Shadow Dragon Scales for a double-slotted item, I mean, I'm, if somebody offered that to me in Sarlona, I'd do that 10 times. Uh, the truth is that that double-slotted blank is probably worth a lot more than that, but I got what I wanted for it, and I'm happy with that trade. It actually took me a little bit longer. I thought I would get a hit right away like I did with the Ring of Spell Story, because, like I said, that's a, that's a priceless item I didn't drop anymore, um, but I had to you know I had to post in trade channel several times over the course of a couple of days. But I finally got someone, and then with the, I got 25 Thunder Forge Dwarven ingots already. So I'm, I'm gonna have to build up to about I think 400 of those. I'm gonna need to get tier two Thunder Forge, and so I traded a stack of like 10 like blister beetles. Those are some of the new collectibles. So here's a, another way that another angle I'm gonna be using to get the things that I want uh, is that these new collectibles. Even some of the old collectibles, I've told you, I've been posted in the auction house, and those are valuable, even to veteran players, because on a lot of veteran players, I mean, they just gave up on collectibles and they stopped collecting them. And with the new crafting system, on top of that, you know, it requires so many collectibles that people are just going through their collectibles like crazy. So I've been selling a lot in the auction house, but I haven't been doing it as much lately. Even with the essences, you can see I have 3 of 69 now. I've been sa I'm saving them for like 1,000 stacks, and then I'm going to use those big stacks to say, hey, you know, I will trade this thousand stack of Caneth Essences for 50 Dwarven Ingots, or whatever, you know, that seems reasonable to me, um, but, you know, whatever. For example, uh, you know, I'm going to take, like, ten stacks of things like Blister Beetles and, and uh, Scarlet Crypt, you know, all these, these new collectibles. It's just, people don't have those yet in large numbers, so those are still really, really valuable, and I can use those. Yeah, I've been farming those, and here's the thing, there are a lot of great collectibles farms out there if you're not familiar with them. Somebody did a really nice write-up uh, in the forums, and I'm going to put the link to that, like how to farm collectibles, in the description of this video. So check that out, and uh, that can be a path for you if you're trying to build up wealth, or even if you're just trying to farm collectibles because you're a crafter. There's some great places to do it. So I'm really forward-thinking here. I mean, this is these dra Shadow Dragon Scales. I'm going to be able to use those for 11 more levels. But thinking ahead. Uh, what else? Is there anything else in my bags that I want to mention? Still got these these things that I got. I purchased for the 
that I get for the, you know, every character, every new character I create gets this stuff because I purchased the pre-orders, or, you know, they purchased the expansions. But I'm still, I'm just showing you, I haven't used them and I'm not going to use them for the whole series. Alright, what am I wearing? Wisdom 7, Conjuration Focus 2 on the goggles. I think it's the same as last time. My beloved blue dragon plate armor. Got the braces, went up to the level 15 version now, so higher magnetism, higher lightning ore. Still got the blurry, dodge bonus up to 8, and it's got air guard now. Totally awesome. This is the same ring. I love this thing. Feather falling, spell resistance 20, protection 5. I got some things like in the queue though that I might end up replacing that before 20. I still got these speed 6 boots. You know, I put the feather falling on the ring because I was hoping to be able to change these boots out, but I just haven't found anything. You know, I'd love to find like speed and parrying. That would be ideal right now. I haven't found it. Frickin' Mobs Fist. This is starting to get embarrassing. But 13% ice lore. I'll take it. Got a new ring. This has got Glaciation 90, balance 13. Uh, I think it's the same belt. Con 6, balance 12. It's a balance redundant, but I wanted a Con 6 item. Cloak of Flames also upgraded. That was a priority for me to upgrade both of these rate at level 15. Higher combustion, higher fire lore. Heightened awareness 2. Fire absorption is up to 24%. Now it's got the fire shield hot proc, so that's nice. As the tanky play style mobs are hitting me, they're taking damage right back. So got the Dusk Heart. That... I don't know if there's really anything else I can replace that with. That's really about the improved false life. I haven't been able to find a, a way to slot false life anywhere else. Uh, same necklace, evocation focus 3, sheltering 16, yellow slot. Totally awesome item for a level 13 item. It would be even better if I could get something to put in that yellow slot. And this is a new helmet, insightful fortification 40. So now I'm up to, look, I'm up to 141% fortification. I mean, that's there's nothing heroic that's going to get through that. Resistance 5, Insightful Physical Sheltering 7. So this is a totally awesome helmet that I just found for, you know, cheap money on the auction house. Wall of Wood, just the normal version. I, I'm a big advocate for just using the normal heroic and the normal epic version. You're not going to use these at Ed Game. You don't need the elite versions. You're just going to use them for a handful of levels. And normal, like the normal version of this is level 15. The elite version is 17. I want to use it at 15. The elite version does have better stats, but I just don't really feel like I need that. And the elite version, you know, it's really expensive. It's harder to farm. Uh, and I just, I purchased this, you know, many levels ago. I found a good deal. And it was sitting in the bank for me, ready to go. It's got heal lamp 20. Natural armor 4 doesn't stack with my spider skin. Um, shield bashing, not a big deal. Devotion 78 is kind of nice, although it's not that much more than what I have on the armor, which is 54 general potency. So it's you know, it, it's 24 more. Let me just double check that I'm right about the 54. 52 potency. So it's a little bit more. I mean, I appreciate that extra healing spell power. And DR5 slashing, that's redundant with my uh, elemental toughness buff. So, you know, it's not as great as it... Well, it's a good shield for a druid. You know, you got to use a wooden shield. You don't have a lot of named shield options. But another really nice one at this level range would be the Shield of Tireless Aid that comes from Devils in the Details. I tried to do that quest. I couldn't do it. You know, I talked about how the new quests are harder hitting. The Abishai just shut me down because I just... I don't have an, enough good ways to damage them on the Druid. And I've talked about, even on Ginger Spice, that a quest like... Oh, the sh Epic Shroud, the Legendary Shroud flagging one, uh, to curse the sky. Like, uh, Ginger Spice can do great crowd control, works great in a group, but solo, it just doesn't work. Uh, the Abishai are just so immune or highly resistant to all your elemental damage types that it's, it just becomes a long slog to try to solo it. But, you know, on this True First Life where I try to do the Heroic Elite at level... I, I really tried, and I couldn't do it. So I want to be really real about where I'm at. You know, I, like I said last video, I'm not trying to say, like, oh, everything's so easy, I'm just smoking everything. Like, it's challenging. I'd really like to get another scimitar, but, eh, the Vorpal's still pretty cool. Okay. You know, talking about the challenges, I was talking to Gildy tonight, and he asked, like, 
what he asked what did I find a greater challenge was it not having ship buffs was it not having past lives or was it not having you know twink gear and that was a great question I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that in my video tonight and first off all those are huge okay the twink gear all the past lives ship buffs huge at this point I think it's the ship buffs. I think if I had to pick one that was the biggest, if I had like my, you know, big ship buffs that I have like on my, you know, we got all the bells and whistles, you know, on in Highlords and Malkir ship and Sarlona. Uh, I think that would be making the biggest difference right now. But at the same time, and so it's important to put it in this perspective too, because all the past lives that Ginger have, I mean, that's years of work. Being triple epic completionist, being single heroic completionist, so. It's almost not a fair, a fair comparison, but you know, in heroics, you know, if I had all those epic past lives in effect right now, I'd have like 36 extra AC. I have like 30, 36 extra PRR. So I, it's just, and those kinds of numbers in heroics are just giant when you're adding that on top of everything else right now. Like if I had 36 more AC, if I had 36 more PRR, I'd be off the chain. Come on now. But yeah, just like even resistances and, and elemental absorptions that you get from the guild ship, those are, those are really, really big. And, and the extra stats and the extra, you know, just everything. I think the ship buffs would be the biggest help for me right now. But past lives are huge too. But, you know, anybody can join a high level guild and get those great ship buffs. That's a lot easier than getting, you know, 50 past lives. So it's all, you know, like I said, it's kind of not a fair comparison. All right. Stop talking and do the frickin' quest. <laughs> Somebody commented on my, one of my videos today that they were... They enjoyed seeing that I was still having fun with the game this many years later. And I think it's more of an aspect of my personality. It's The things that are going on inside my head are very funny to me. It's amusing. It's like Homer Simpson. So, like I said, I'm gonna take this slow. I cannot speed through this. Uh, this is a, this is a challenge. Mana conservation, and some of these mobs are pretty hard hitting. I mean, when I get some champions, I get a few champions in here. It's it's a little painful. But like I said, I wanted to do this video because it drops such a great piece of gear. Those guys are references to Pulp Fiction, if you know Julius and Vincent, Vincent Vega, and uh, Jules Winfield from uh, Pulp Fiction. And then here, the Upstanding Citizen, they talk a lot. That's a line that Uma Thurman says uh, when Vincent Vega and, and her character uh, Mia Wallace, it, they're eating at that 50s diner. And, and and they're having that conversation where, uh, you know, he's saying he heard something about her, and he he she asked who who'd you hear this from, and he said they, and she said they talk a lot, don't they? So this is a uh, another this is a pretty cool little Pulp Fiction drop in here. I love that movie. One of my faves. You know, I realized after I did that Demon Queen video that I never used my action boost. That would have been helpful. Plus 10 to armor class. And PRR. I should have hit that when when she was going to war, but that's okay. I thought that was a pretty cool ending. Remember doing Epic Demon Queen back in the day, and you know, it was just lag out, you know, when she would go to war, just like crazy, and just be spamming heals, and you just, you'd hope that when it was all said and done, you know, somebody in your, you know, you'd still be standing and the Demon Queen would be dead. I mean, it was just, it was so bad. And I remember being in multiple groups where, you know, we all died, but the Demon Queen had dots on her, and we ended up completing because the dots took her down, even though we were all dead. 
and you know probably any veteran player out there who who used to do the Demon Queen raid back when the level cap was 20. <laughs> you know, had you know if you were a raider back then, you probably experienced similar things. Those are some good times, you know. I mean, the lag sucked, you know. Of course, I, I'm not trying to say I will. I wish there would lag, but you know, those were legendary completions. You know, back when that raid was really tough to do. You know, you you did that on epic, and there were, you were not. C completion was not a gimme. Not by, not by a long shot. You had to have a good group. You had to have good healers. You had to have a plan. Back when they were doing the Spartan method, you'd, you know, you'd have the the melees up there in the front line, and then you'd have the, the healers right behind them, and then the casters behind them. You know, and that way the healers would just sort of just keep hitting their heals, and that would hit everybody their their mass heals. And you know that the DQ broke through that front line because the casters grabbed the aggro and the you know the the melees got pushed over. You know then shit started going to hell. Warpold. So I'm taking my time here. You know I mean I you know if I had more resources, you know I could just throw a greater creeping cold on each one of these guys and they'd be smoked. But I you know that'll I'll run out of mana in no time if I do that. So I've got to. You know, it's a good example of how to run conservatively. The archers, for whatever reason, they don't move, so you get in a you get in a bind. Just hide. You can also effectively keep yourself with springs resurgence. So I'm just gonna I won't throw any more heal scrolls, and I want to show you. You know, I'm just gonna let myself tick damage. You know, take it down to half, and you could just you can essentially heal keep yourself healed with springs resurgence because. And it's healing me to full at this point. Okay, Springs Resurgeon should kick in. There it goes. Heals me to full, and I recast it right away. Come over here and let my body of the sun chew up this guy. Hell yeah. I don't know what, the, what they're doing. Sometimes they act funny. And that's fine. I'm not going to complain. Let the body of the sun do the work. Should have probably done that on the other guys too. I'm going to take out this bodyguard first. A lot less hit points, and that's one less person. See, Springs of Surgeon's proc healed me to full, and I just recast it. I should be drinking my spell power pots. And using my action boost, my spell power boost. I'm so bad about using that. Breakables, very easy to get uh, full breakables bonus. There's not that many breakables. Some there. Uh, but this quest is terrible XP. So you're you're not really getting much extra for doing that anyways. Got a champion. Springs of Surgeon's healed made full again. Pretty cool if you get in the habit of using that. It can be some low cost healing, but you can't let yourself get scared about being halfway down. You have to be confident that that Springs Resurgence is going to kick in. It only lasts five minutes though, so you got to make sure that you know it hasn't been over. It hasn't expired. Otherwise, you know you're going to get way down there and go, "Why is it kicking in?" Oh shoot! What am I doing? You don't have to kill all these mobs. You just have to kill the ones in front of the barriers. Focus on this champion. Don't need him shooting at me. Right? To save resources, I'm not going to worry about all those other guys. I'm just going to take the guys out in front of the barrier. I think that Bayou the Sun is not only a fun spell, but it's a beautiful spell. 
my only issue with it is it's just a little bit too opaque. If it's a little bit more transparent, that would be nice. And on the PDK, oh, it's so obnoxious. It's just so big. You know, and it's just, it makes it even harder to see through because it's just taking so much of your screen. Healed the full with Springs Resurgence. So I did this as soon as I hit 13 on Elite. It was two levels under it. That was tough. I mean, I was, I was having to dance in the end fight. Had no mana. Jump around like a jackass. So your other collectibles are over here. I mean, your breakables are over here. No collectibles in this one. Lucy Lawful. Of course, there's another pop culture reference to Lucy Lawless. Okay, if this is getting a little tough for you, you know, don't be afraid to use, you know, you can hide, you can come back here, get out of the way from those archers up there, you know, while you're taking these guys out. Springs Resurgence. Oh, how I love thee. Just gotta be patient. Patient. Let your let your if your if your mana starves, you let your you let your uh, SLAs come off cooldown. Choose them up. Here, again, to save resources, normally I'd want to take out that champion because I want the remnants, but I, I don't want to use any more resources up. You can just run through the woods until you get to the end fight. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself. This end fight's... Uh, I need some fire, and I think electrical resistance, maybe even cold too. Chewing up on mana. Gonna use Earthquake by the sun. Throw some uh, sunburst action. Ooh, that's scary, huh? Springs Resurgence. If I get rid of these casters. Can't let them hang around. Recast it right away. Otherwise you're going to be sad. Lucy Lawful is this frickin' champion. Not cool. It's tough. I told you it was tough. I told you at the start. You can see I'm getting a little tore up here. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I'm running out of mana. That's okay. You know, I, I think I talked before about how, you know, when a druid's out of mana, because of your arsenal of SLAs, I mean, you can still do a lot of damage. You just got to be patient. All right, let's get rid of these suckers. Now it's just me and Lucy. Uh oh, gotta use extra charges. Scary. I 
having to use up all of the twisted talisman. That's it, and that's all. You can do it. Like doing this first lifer. Come on now, you could solo this. Give me a pansophic circlet. Switch to your voice of the master so you get 5% XP. Look at that, 4600. It's garbage. It's a joke. Come on, halter top. Hypnotic pendant. I've pulled two of the bracers and hypnotic pendant, and every one of them has been Mythic 1. No circlet for me. Maybe I should have rerolled. Got some shards now. That's another thing I meant to talk about. You know, I did a video not long ago talking about how you want to collect your monster manual rewards. And you're going to go in here and you're going to look for all the exclamation points. And I did that yesterday, so that's why you don't see any now. But um, that's going to tell you there's a new thing, uh, and that, that there's a new accomplishment since the last time you checked it and you open that one if there's a little glowing box around one of the entries that means there's a reward to collect and I had like 250 remnants and one of the rewards was one astral shard and one astral shard is enough to post something on the shard exchange so if, you, if you're like me you don't want to spend real money on astral shards you get them from your monster manual okay and then uh, you can start posting on the shard exchange and you can see I already sold one item I got 18 shards now so it's another thing I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna see like how how many shards can I get to in addition to plat? And that'll open up some options. Maybe get some nicer things off the shard exchange. So talk more about my progress there in future videos. Thank you for watching. If you have questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. If you have questions about my build, you can respond in the Druid forums. And if you're on Saralona, you're welcome to send me a tell.